Google has a ton of different OBD2 readers as well as diagnostic computers and even peripherals like endoscopes, TPMS, relearners, uh, battery modules. But this handles a lot of that and it will work with other units as well. Now specifically, this is the model number D7W. So here's a quick start guide. There really is no thick manual. Um, you can access that from the unit itself. Uh, so basically it just talks about getting started and putting your email address in and updating things like that. Now, here's what it comes with. The tablet's over here, uh, but one thing it's not short on is cables for charging. As you can see here, we have the typical US 110, 120 volt, and then we also have this plug here, this plug here, so covering all the Europeans. Enjoy that jet flying by. And uh, then we have a basically an adapter that I'm sure steps that down to the 5 volts or 12 volts that it's requiring. Yeah, 12 volts, so 12 volt output at 3, three amps. Um, so it's charging on 12 volts, but obviously converting that from 120 volts. So it makes this different than most others, especially at this price point is this dongle here. Well, you may say, you know what, Tim, there's many others that have dongles uh, that connect to the scanner or to the uh, scan tool, and you are correct. However, this is not Bluetooth, this is Wi-Fi. We'll cover why that's important in just a second. The Xtool D7W runs on the Android 10 operating system, and that's going to update over time, obviously, as Android uh, rolls out new versions, but you're already starting on a very up-to-date system. Uh, we also get what looks like to be about a seven inch screen if I'm not mistaken. So if we go from two, from corner to corner, yeah, two to nine. So we get a seven inch screen. And by the way, you get three years of updates with this as well. So you get a two year warranty on the machine itself, uh, but you get three years of updates. So once you purchase this, You've got three years of updating the system. And by the way, there's a little update tab right here. When you turn it on, you click the update tab. When we originally got this, I think there were like 140 updates because uh, this handles like 140 different models and 85 plus manufacturers. Uh, so I had a ton of up updates and you may even have a firmware update to do when you first get yours. Uh, but right now it says there are no updates, but it's really easy to do the updates. You hit the update tool and then you can say update all, or you can just select the manufacturers that you want to update. And when you go into this screen here, you can basically choose between Europe, Americas, and Asia, and that'll have the different groupings of the manufacturers. And you can go in that way, or you can just hit the VIN button here and auto scan. And when the dongle's in place, it will actually auto scan and look for all the VIN information, the manufacturer. Now, if it's an older vehicle, you may have to manually input that and actually input the VIN or select from the actual manufacturer and model. Uh, now, when we look at the top of this unit, uh, we see a couple, couple of things that we have here. Number one, the barrel connector for the charger. I do wish that it had a different type of charger, but it charges with 12 volts uh, from the 120 volt adapter. Uh, so that's the way you charge it. This is a USB type A port. Uh, again, I wish it had a USB type C that would communicate that way as well as be able to charge that way. I think that would just be a small expense to do so and would be a great feature to have. However, we're charging from the 12 volt barrel connector there. Um, on the back side of the unit, we have a little kickstand. Uh, this comes in very handy, not only for, you know, on the desk here, or on the worktop, but also to put, you know, on your toolbox. And also it should hang um, when you're in the car as well. And we'll, we will show you that. Now this is a very rugged uh, case. I say case, it's kind of built in, uh, but it's got rubber over molding here on the right and the left. So it grips very easy, uh, nice thick design. So should be quite rugged for uh, getting banged around the shop. Nothing here on the bottom, on the back side, as well as the kickstand, we have a speaker. And then we also have a camera and what looks like an LED light there uh, for a flash or for a flashlight. It looks like we probably have a covering there. So yeah, make sure you take that off when you first get it, which by the way, on the front side, um, there is a cover as well, but I left that on there and just kind of trimmed off the little tab that was on there and just use that as your screen protector. Or if you want to peel that off and get your own screen protector, you can do that as well. 
Now, once you've done all your updates, it's going to take you back to this screen here. And then this is where you can go to your diagnostic, your special functions, reporting, whatever you want to do. And uh, even a more button here, if we go into more, um, then it gives us some additional functions we can do from uh, an endoscope so we can add different items to it as well. So we can utilize that camera on an endoscope to actually keep it as part of this report here and be able to see it right here on our screen. Uh, obviously profile and VCI management as well. And then here's our user manual also. So back out of there. And if we go into special functions, you have a huge array of different special functions we can do uh, from battery management to key programming. And by the way, this is going to be different per manufacturer. So we may be able to do some key programming, say on GM, uh, but not be able to do anything on BMW, VW, things like that. That's not set in stone. I'm just giving you an idea that some manufacturers may not offer some of these special functions that we hear, have here on the screen. Um, even into your throttle position, EEPROM, even uh, speed limiting, as well as oil reset, uh, headlights, just a huge gamut. Uh, airbag stuff, again, that may be particular to some uh, different manufacturers and not on others, uh, but just a lot of different special functions that they do offer. If we go into diagnostic, it's probably going to be looking for our VIN, but we can also just go in here and say, okay, we're going to go into Europe, which is here we are, or I can go into the Americas. So you can see all of our different US manufacturers, even though it's not manufactured here, but you get it. So if I went into Cadillac, and so this is where it's actually looking for the VCI. It's looking for the dongle that it's plugged in and it's not plugged in. So it's probably going to return me back to the screen here uh, until it finds this. So we'll plug it in here in just one moment. Yeah, so it says VCI connection failed. So it's trying to connect to this via Wi-Fi, not finding it. So I can say, okay. And I'm sure again, back to the screen. So we can select it from the menu here, but also when I plug this in, you'll see that it auto recognizes that I plug something in and should find that VIN if it's a new enough vehicle. Now let's talk about why this Wi-Fi is important or why it's uh, something that's more beneficial than say Bluetooth. And by the way, as far as protocol here, uh, this will handle CAN FD protocol. So your 2020 plus GM vehicles, as well as uh, DOIP protocol for your BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover communication as well. So let's talk about this Wi-Fi. In fact, let's talk about the old Bluetooth. So most of your dongles talked over Bluetooth. And what we would have, we would have the vehicle or the ECM, maybe even the TCM and other modules in the vehicle that was then talking to, let's just call it the dongle. And then that was talking to the diagnostic computer. Okay, well the problem was the way that this dongle was talking to the diagnostic computer was over Bluetooth, okay? And by the way, this is bi-directional as well. So the diagnostic computer is talking back and forth to the dongle, the dongle is talking back and forth uh, to the ECM, TCM, and other modules that are in the vehicle. Well, this can be a huge roadblock. In other words, there's only uh, so fast of data transfer speed in Bluetooth, and it's not that impressive. This is, what, 20-year-old technology that we're dealing with. Now, we, we've got additional versions, or we've gone up in versions with Bluetooth, but still, it's not near as fast as Wi-Fi. So if we take this, and then we talk to the dongle and the diagnostic computer with Wi-Fi, now all of a sudden our speeds are much faster. However, what we still have is the communication here between the car, the different modules and the dongle. So there can still be a roadblock here where the car's computer can't talk all that fast to the dongle, but we definitely don't have the hurdle with the Bluetooth. Also, we're gonna get probably more range with the Wi-Fi as well. So if you wanna be working at your desk or on your on your uh, toolbox and uh, the dongles in the vehicle, you can definitely do that. Or maybe you need to have this on the charge because it's not USB or you can't use it in a cigarette lighter. 
uh, you can have this plugged in again on your toolbox and be able to work from the toolbox while the dongle is in the vehicle.